Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore video and today we are going to take a look at Albedo's older sister, who she is, why she should have appeared 5 years ago and why a plea for mercy ultimately mattered. But before we are going to do so let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube thanks function who made one time donations. Also please check out my fantasy channel and you will find a link to it down in the description. Now with all of that said, let's take a closer look at Albedo's older sister. And Tabula Smagdina has put a lot of thought into the three sisters. I made a full video already covering just Nigredo, but let me quickly reiterate the main points. The NPCs Nigredo, Albedo and Rubedo are named after the three stages of the creation of the Sorcerer's Stone, blackening, whitening and ultimately reddening. And she lives in the frozen prison because she's basically a horror film monster, like the girl from the ring, but even more scarier. Originally, she should have appeared in the first season of Overlord, because in the books she was the one who tracked down Sheltier and surveilled the area. That's why Eins and Albedo went down or rather up to the frozen prison in the first place. There she also made a scary prophecy that has gotten even more scarier the more the story had progressed. Basically Albedo's younger sister Rubedo will eventually cause a great calamity in Nazarick. But with all of that said, let's get to the juicy part of the story, for while Nigredo looks like a horror film monster, she is actually a very kind hearted and caring woman, as far as babies are concerned. Granted, she is odd, twitchy and looks like Tomoko from Watamoto, but she is actually kind and caring. But that's just due to her creator, Tabula Smaragdina, liking this thing. It's called Gapmoe and it's art. Cuteness derived from the difference between the looks and the impression of a character and the way the character actually is and acts. And with her positive karma value, she is actually one of the few safe and nice persons in Nazarick as far as outsiders are concerned. So much so, that she not only pleaded for the saving of the people, mainly the babies of the Riestai's population, but she already ignored orders from Einzulgon prior and saved the kids, marked already as doomed and death during Operation Gehenna. As a specialized squire and seer, she was tasked with the surveillance of the operation and that's how she got the intel about the kids in the first place. And this is really something worthy of mentioning, that an NPC willingly ignored and violated the orders of the supreme being and the very supreme leader Einzul Gon. And the very reason for all of this is, that when in doubt, NPCs like Sebas, Pestonia or Nigredo will try to do so as the original creators, so Touch Me or Tabula Smaragdina for example, would have wanted them to act, instead of how they were ordered to act. But nonetheless, even with all of that said, Nigredo is still loyal to Einzul Gon. In fact even more so than maybe Albedo. But with all of that said, the plea for the life of the children of Rias Ties had more practical effects. First and foremost, Nigredo basically ignored the order of command and asked Einzul Gon to come personally to her room in order to then ask him to stop the killing of the children and save as many kids as possible. While Eins was not amused about any of this, Nigredo and Pestonia had gone against the orders of him and their superiors in the past and were now under house arrest, so sending Sebas out to fetch Eins was a great offense to Sebas and Eins. And I really want to highlight how extremely odd and unique the perspective is that we are provided with. Normally, we have the protagonist plead for the life of the children, while only for example a greedy opportunist or bureaucrats or faceless companies and their CEOs would put concerns about procedure and protocol at the heart of the matter. You can really see Nigredo getting emotional, getting up and pleading for the lives of children while Eins wanted to preserve the order inside the great tomb of Nazarick. But with all of that said, since the two are still NPCs of his cherished friends, Eins nonetheless felt that he should also take their feelings and their perspective into account, which had put him into a very odd spot. On one hand, he had already agreed on an all-out war and annihilation of the kingdom. On the other hand, Pestonia and Nigredo wanted as many kids as possible to be safe, stressing their potential. 
something that Einzelgon actually saw as a negative, fearing the strengthening of his citizens could ultimately undermine Nazarick's own power. But luckily Eins was able to resolve the situation. He asked Cocutus what he learned from the first defeat at the hand of the Lizardmen, which was quite a lot. So Eins intentionally stretched the forces a bit thin here and there, not only in order to be more economical, but also to test the limits that the Death Knights and the Death Warriors could take. And he also encouraged let's call it unorthodox battle plans and tactics. And finally, when the relatively weak force he sent after Ena Uru had been surprisingly defeated, and so Go not only gained a pretext to let some people escape into safety, but also found a real powerful foe, with a great Yggdrasil relic that he previously just has overlooked. And the guy in the red suit was just a harbinger of a much more powerful foe. But this is a topic for another time. For today, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bad Guy Bad Burrito 316 B Zer Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Crystal Prime Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devin Downen, Ding Dong, Duck Wagon, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Thuralshivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Morino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kylar, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Normal Toad, Oakill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pentum, Personage, Primus Eleven, Cune Karakos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc War Boss, Rock at Smasher, T. E. Vang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.